Everybody, Jeff, your executive gardener. I know, I know, I said I would not be taking another video from Texas, but here I am. I'm back for the week of July 4th, and I want to do a quick video on uh, talking a little bit about what I've done to increase the sugar content of my cherry tomatoes. We all know what store-bought tomatoes taste like, and I tried uh, to get my Brix content, B-R-I-X, the sugar content that's measured in fruit up as high as possible. So I actually got to about eight, eight, five for my cherry tomatoes. And the bricks content is, it measures the amount of sugar that you have in your fruit. And I'll show you what the refractometer looks like, but, and I'll show you what I use to get up my sugar content in my tomatoes. Of course, I have my faithful dog with me, Nala. He's with me. It's currently about 98 degrees, about 12 o'clock in Houston, Texas. Let me take you over to the tomato plant and show you what's going on. All right, everybody. So this is my last remaining cherry tomato plant. This is actually a husky tomato plant. And it just seems to keep producing more and more tomatoes. So we took off the ripe tomatoes. They're there. They're the red tomatoes. And um, so we're going to talk about the bricks content within a tomato. So the difference between store-bought tomatoes and homegrown tomatoes like that uh, is a lot. But the main difference is that store-bought tomatoes are built for production, large quantities. So tomato growers pick it when it's green, they spray gas over it, and it uh, unnaturally causes the fruit to turn red. So it may cause the skin, the outer layer of the fruit, to turn red. However, it does not turn on the sugar content within the tomato, which is uh, measured by the bricks within the tomato. So it may be red, but that's why you get a store-bought tomato and it tastes like eating cardboard or paper. So the bricks content of a store-bought tomato, a cherry tomato, or a tomato, let's say a smaller one, three or four or five inches around, is typically between three and five. Um, very bland, again, the reason it's picked before it's ripe. So uh, the, it's an unnatural process where they spray those tomatoes to get them red, but again, the flavor does not turn on within the tomato. So uh, we look at these, and these were just picked a little while ago. These are all beautiful red, and they've followed the natural process. So what I tried to do this year in my cherry tomatoes, it's planted in the five-gallon bucket, is number one, I used fish fertilizer. So this is a content, uh, it's a 511. I applied it every week with water and um, uh, fish fertilizer, for those who don't know, uh, smells like death's door. So it's pretty bad, but um, the plants seem to like it. And I think what this has done for me, in addition to the original nutrients, is push up or, or improve the photosynthesis and the energy created by the plant that sends energy to the fruit. And that starch is turned into sugar. And it seems to be a higher content. So to do this and determine the bricks content in your fruit, you buy a refractometer, which looks like this. You, you simply lift the glass on the refractometer. You spray the juice let me see if i can spray the juice you lift the glass you put the juice on here and then you look through this hole and you'll see a scale that goes from 0 to 20 and where the line draws is the bricks content so the bricks of these tomatoes right here are between it's about 885 so it's pretty sweet uh the content of a store-bought tomato which i tried was about four so it's double the sugar content, so it's a better tomato. Another reason why you should always grow your fruit at home, if you have a little bit of extra space for a five-gallon bucket or a tomato garden, um, there's no 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 um, there's no difference in the taste. Excuse me, there's a huge difference in the taste. There's no comparing between this, and you'll see that there's tomatoes going through the natural process from that green to the red. There's probably a better example as you look at a clump of just beautiful husky tomatoes. So that's it. Uh, now we've picked most of the fruit off of this. It's been going on for about a month or so. 
But let me tell you about the bricks content. So store bought is three to five. Again, you're pretty much eating red cardboard. It's not that good. Pretty much with any store bought tomato you bought, whether it's Whole Foods or you know whatever Kroger. Once you get to uh, farmers markets, they obviously grow their own. The bricks content goes up. So three to five is store bought, defined as eating red cardboard. Once you get to about six, tomatoes start tasting a little bit better. Once you get up to eight, that's where you know, without question, the bricks content, the sugar content of the fruit, that's a homegrown tomato. You can tell immediately when you bite into it. The water content, the sweetness of the tomato, typically less acidic. Uh, than others. It's, again, it's gone through the natural process. Once you get to 10, you'll buy that tomato again. You'll grow that tomato again. Once you get to 12, you're starting to say, Mamma Mia. You're starting to go back to your ancestral roots, maybe in Italy or Europe, where they grew everything fresh. And then if you get to a 14 bricks content, you're definitely doing something right. You should enter it in a contest. So again, the range can be from four Eh, it's about 12 or 14, the average being about 8 or 10. Give it a try. Again, you can uh, sample with uh, a lot of different type of tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes tend to be a little bit higher bricks content or sugar content than the bigger tomatoes, but try different nutrients. When that bricks content is high, it simply means the plant is really happy. It's got the right proportion of sun, water, and nutrients to create that higher sugar. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Give it a shot growing your own tomatoes. Do your own test. See if you can get that 8 to 10 range for your cherry tomatoes. And again, go to the store, buy that, buy a refractometer like this, cost about 30 bucks, and take the test yourself. You will never buy another store-bought tomato again. I hope you've enjoyed this brief episode on the bricks content and what makes a great tomato. Until next time. Jeff, your executive gardener. Bye for now. The dog days of summer here in Houston. Just chilling in the shade, staying out of the sun. Nala, you a good dog? Of course she is. <laughs>